my friend. Saul Canelo Alvarez versus Gennady Triple G Golovkin. I think this one is guaranteed to be a barn burner because the styles of these two guys, Canelo wants you to come in and punch you, and Gennady's the uh, prodigious puncher who's uh, stalking you at all times. But at the end of the day, they're going to end up in a phone booth on September the 16th and both guys can punch. What Canelo needs to do is try to bait Gennady in, and before Gennady can land one of those tremendous thudding shots of his, he needs to get off three, four, five punch combinations and then attempt to get out of there. That's going to be one of his, uh, one of his problems, getting out of there. But I think quick hands, combination punches, especially the uppercut, when Gennady's making his way inside, that's what Canelo needs to do. He kind of needs to try and outbox Golovkin. Gennady is the best puncher in all of boxing. He has what I call that uncommon power. He hits you and you stay hit. And I think what he will do was apply tremendous pressure, cut the ring off, Canelo has a habit, and it'll be a bad habit in this fight, of languishing against the ropes to try to set up counter shots. And I think that systematically, Gennady will break him down with that tremendous pressure, cut off the ring, and he also hits you with shots that you don't expect. You know, a lot of guys can throw a left and a right and a hook, but Gennady goes over the top and underneath and over, and you don't see, you can't defense against the type of shots that he has in his offensive repertoire. So I think Golovkin just has to be, uh, you know, bring to the dance what got him there. And that's that tremendous, tremendous punching power. I, I've seen Canelo improving every fight recently. But the one area that has always been and will continue to be a problem for him is feet. He just is slow of foot. He has good upper body movement. He does that Mexican head roll to avoid shots. His defense has improved, but he's just simply, you know, sloth footed. He's slow of foot. I think for Gennady Glovkin, the only real decline that I see is perhaps Father Times kind of hanging around him. We saw that in the last two fights with Kell Brook and with Danny Jacobs he seemed to not be able to pull the trigger like we've seen him in the past. Uh, he definitely allows himself to get hit with shots that are unnecessary. He won't want to do that against Canelo. But if anything, perhaps just some slippage due to the fact that he's 35 years of age, he's been fighting since he's a kid. In terms of power, in terms of stamina, in terms of accuracy, I mentioned the left jab, all the categories that I feel are important offensively, not to mention punching power, all of those categories, I give the edge. I give the edge to Gennady Golovkin. I don't see much feeling out process. I, I think that uh, Canelo's gonna try to be the counter puncher, and I, I, I think I could see him winning early rounds with his quicker hands as Gennady starts to walk him down and systematically break him down. But in the end, I, what I think this is gonna boil down to is not so much who can give it, they both can give it, although clearly I give the edge in punching power to, to Gennady, but it's gonna be who can take it. And I, so I think what'll happen over time those slow feet of Canelo will not be able to get him out of the way of the consistent onslaught of Gennady Golovkin, and I think Golovkin stops him somewhere after round nine. Since I'll be ringside, I don't exactly know what they're charging for this pay-per-view, but whatever it is, it's going to be worth it. I mean, this is the fight that is happening at the right time. You have the two best middleweights 
on the planet and it is going to be fistic fireworks September the 16th. You're not going to want to miss Gennady Golovkin and Canelo Alvarez from the T-Mobile Arena and on HBO pay-per-view. I'm already excited. Can't wait for the fight.